Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Ruby and today we are beginning a new series on Factor Theories of Intelligence. In our previous videos, we have covered several cognitive theories and now we are entering into some interesting approaches that focuses on the different factors that contribute to intelligence. Today's video will be on the unitary theory also known as the monarchic theory of intelligence. This theory marks one of the earliest attempts to explain intelligence. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of what this theory is, how it was conceptualized, and what educational implication it holds. Before we get started, if you are new to this channel, we take classes on education subject. We have a playlist called Educational Philosophy, where we have covered both the Indian and Western philosophies. And recently we have started classes on educational psychology. We have covered various theories which you can find in the playlist called educational psychology. And I will also link those videos in the description below. We also have a playlist called government educational policies and schemes and daily MCQs, which can be beneficial for students preparing for net exam, be it students, or even if you have an upcoming assistant professor job interview. So if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, subscribe now and press the bell icon so that you get all the new videos on time. Now let us get started. First, let us talk about what this theory actually is. The unitary or monarchic theory of intelligence suggests that intelligence is a single unified ability. According to this theory, all cognitive abilities, whether they involve problem solving, reasoning, or memory, are expressions of one core general intelligence. So unlike modern theories that divide intelligence into multiple factors, this approach looks at intelligence as something monolithic, like a monarch ruling over all intellectual functions. This theory was one of the first to appear in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when researchers were still figuring out how to measure intelligence. So at that time, the idea was that a single test score, like an IQ test, could represent a person's overall intellectual ability. Now let us break this down according to the unitary theory. This theory states that all types of intellectual activities comes from a single G factor or general intelligence. No matter what kind of task you are performing, whether it's solving a math problem or remembering a list of words, your performance is determined by this one overarching ability. Now, one of the major limitations of this theory is its simplicity. It doesn't account for the wide variety of cognitive skills we now understand people have. Think about how different tasks like playing chess, learning a language, or performing in sports are. How can one kind of intelligence explain success in all these areas? This theory faces criticism as more nuanced understandings of intelligence emerge. So this theory is like saying there's just one king in the brain that controls everything. It doesn't take into account that different parts of the brain might specialize in different tasks, which we now know is true through modern research. Now that we understood the theory, let us move on to its educational implications. Starting with point number one, standardized curriculum design. The unitary theory supports the idea of a one-size-fits-all curriculum where all students are expected to follow the same learning path. Since intelligence is viewed as a single measurable trait, the curriculum is often designed without considering individual differences, promoting uniform content for all learners. Point number two, uniform teaching methods. Educators may adopt a generalized teaching approach using methods that are believed to enhance intelligence across the board. This could result in an over-reliance on lectures, rote memorization, and repetitive exercises as they are seen as ways to boost general cognitive functioning. Point number three, 
emphasis on general ability testing. Intelligence tests, particularly those that are focused on general cognitive abilities like IQ, may be heavily utilized. Schools could base important decisions such as class placement, students tracking, and resource allocation on these tests, assuming that intelligence can be effectively measured through such assessments. Next, lack of attention to diverse learning styles. Since the theory suggests that intelligence is a singular, overarching ability, educators might not focus enough on students' individual learning styles, preferences, or strengths. Students who don't excel in traditional academic tasks might be considered less intelligent, even if they possess strong creative or practical skills. Next, streamlined support programs. Support programs for struggling students may focus solely on reinforcing general cognitive skills rather than addressing specific learning challenges. This might result in remedial programs that emphasize memory drills, problem-solving tasks, or logical reasoning exercises with less attention given to alternative strategies that could help students thrive. Point number six, potential overemphasis on academic subjects. The unitary theory focus on general intelligence may lead schools to prioritize traditional subjects like math, science, and language as they are seen as indicators of cognitive ability. Non-academic areas like arts sports, or vocational skills might receive less attention, reducing opportunities for students to explore different areas of talents. So that was all on today's class on the unitary theory of intelligence. I hope you liked the video. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions regarding this theory. You can also mention any topic of education subject that you would want me to cover in the upcoming classes. Like, subscribe and share. Thank you for watching and see you in the next class.